<clears throat> so I have shared this PPT with you guys, right? So can anyone tell what is functional and what is non-functional? What is the difference between functional testing and non-functional testing? I think we have covered a little bit in the last class, but not like fully. We have covered. What yes, is functional yes. testing? Yes. Yeah, functional testing are test by the tester and uh, uh, non-functional uh, te uh, uh, testing test by the developer. Mm, I doubt that. No, no. Now, for non-functional testing, there are different type of testers. They, yeah. That also is done by the testers, but they know they should know coding, coding yep. part. Yeah. But that yeah. that doesn't mean that functional uh, non-functional tester know about the uh, you know the internal <clears throat> part of the uh, development. No. Yes. Yes. They just yes. want. They just know about that particular tool which they are using for non-functional testing like performance testing scalability testing volume testing so for stress testing load testing for that there is a different type of tools come because without tool we cannot do the non functional testing all these testing is not possible so yeah. those are the testers who know about those tools but it's not like the developer do non functional testing no i told yep. you only unit testing is done by the developers rest all the other testing is done by the testers only yes yes. Okay. yes yes excuse me yeah any anybody else wanted to share like what is the difference between functional and non functional yeah uh, uh, so functional uh, mm -hmm. testing is uh, like done based on business requirements uh, mm -hmm. and non functional uh, usually uh, based on the performance uh, like you know how it should be performed and usually client customer expectations uh, expectations correct so, so requirement and expectation they both are similar but uh, the difference if you wanted to find the difference the expectations like what customer expect from you and what customer require from you these are the two different things so functional testing is their requirement that they require these things but the expectation is what that security should be good they expect that the performance of the application should be good they expect that the they have uh, you have that uh, load testing only if it is required okay otherwise functionality wise you have already all done but these things are your add ons okay good anyone else apart from ramya and uh, um um ambrish ambrish only no i'm spelling your i'm pronouncing yeah. your name correct correct yeah. ma'am correct okay anyone else Rhea? one thing can we share ma'am uh, i think functional testing is uh, uh, we can do it, uh, do it both way manual and automated and non functional mm. we can do with uh, only automatic testing correct correct this is the perfect uh, perfect difference between functional and non functional so non functional we cannot do manual we need some tool to perform the non functional testing like performance testing scalability volume so these testing cannot be done manually we need some tool correct yes and yes, the non functional testing is extreme level of testing like uh, well yeah it's it's a uh, non functional testing is testing like uh, when when the code code will break or when the system right. will break yeah it's like uh, hypothetical situations not hypothetical but yeah like uh, uh, like for example as, as i told you like facebook in facebook you there are chances that um, thousand of people hit your application at the same time so is this uh is your application is that stress tested already that if thousands of people uh, no log in into your application it will that your application may handle these many people in your uh, in your uh, you know system so that is a stress testing that is also load testing also is there so these these things these situation is not hypothetical these are real situations right so uh, can this be handled by your software or not so that is that is called as non functional testing and always non functional testing is always after functional testing when everything all the functional part of the software is been done after that no 
uh, non functional will be tested yes anyone else good priya good point i have a question shafi um, mm -hmm. so yes. usually api testing comes under functional testing yes api testing is functional testing it's a back end testing no so api testing is a functional testing but uh, like for apis also you have manual as well as tools so uh, that is functional testing but their errors their way of <coughs> their way of testing is totally different for that you need to have a token you need to have authorities you need to have a um, no uh, authorized users correct so those things you need there yeah okay so that is functional testing only correct okay okay so you are we are clear so can we move on anyone has any doubt yes pallavi you want to say something uh no actually uh, can you please let me in cuz i was uh, doing it from my uh, system right now uh, but uh, i am on my mobile right now can you please let me in i have already sent the request in the zoom meeting i don't see the request here i've already everybody is in i don't see any pending request here can you send me again uh, yeah sure okay yes i did That's it again now now i can see okay thank you so much welcome okay any anyone has any other doubt about the functional and non functional otherwise we move on to software testing levels okay um uh, chavi what is main difference between load testing and stress stress this uh, testing yeah so load testing and stress testing is almost similar but uh, as i am not a non functional tester so i don't know the exact difference but stress testing is what how many stress you have given it to uh, stress means uh, uh, like uh, when you are testing with the some application it's good to find a find it in google that what is the difference between a load and a stress testing good question Minute. It's always changed to Google to some other search engine. Okay. Yes, so load testing helps you to understand how the system behaves under the extreme load, while the stress helps you to understand the upper limit. Suppose there are like a, a one lakh user in your uh, system, okay. Now you are stretching the upper limit by giving the two lakh user. So that is the stress. That is the uh, you are increasing your stress level of your application. okay in load you understand that how it behaves when we give the expected load okay the, there is expected load but here it is like beyond the expectation so maximum capacity se bhi zyada when we are giving the more than the capacity which is expected so beyond the expectation so here it is expected load and here it is a um, like a, if you try to give Uh, extend the upper limit of the system of the uh, uh, system's capabilities okay so capacity of the system if you extend it then how it behaves so this is the difference between load and stress so again here there are um n number of people then here there are n plus 1 number of people okay so again the n numbers people you cannot do it manually you need one tool for both the testing for stress testing as well as load testing because 
it is not possible to gather all the people together and then start testing which is not feasible which is not practically possible manually it is not possible so that's why we do the we take the help of the tool to do the these type of testing clear anyone has any other question so if you apply for like job for mm -hmm. like a functional testing as a functional tester then we will mm -hmm. also get the questions for for the non functional testing or it's no, like you will not get any question about the non functional testing but you should know that what is non functional testing you should know okay. that what comes under non functional testing you should you will be asked about the unit testing acceptance testing smoke testing integration testing you will be asked in detail about these testing only but from knowledge you should know these are the different type of testing of non functional testing you yeah. will be asked in detail what is acceptance testing we have done this in detail that acceptance what is acceptance testing now can anyone tell what is smoke testing what is smoke testing smoke or sanity testing this is a very important interview question what is the difference between smoke and sanity testing so this is your assignment now okay what is the difference between can you write it down what is all your assignment i want you to tell in next class that what is the difference between a smoke and a sanity testing anyone know right now what is smoke, smoke and yeah. sanity 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 is also functional testing okay yes okay um can i can i say yes yeah, a smoke smoke test uh, we we do like after we get the um, requirement uh, and after we get all the i mean documentation and then we do like a quick quick mm -hmm. te quick testing that uh, okay the um, um okay the software is running properly or not like a, a, a we, yes. if we get when a, we get the requirement not when we get the requirement I mean, sorry sorry software. yeah when sorry new build. new build or the software yeah. Yes. So we do like a quick test, uh, like uh, is it up and running, and uh, if we get a correct right. version of code, right. and uh, right. yeah, mm. something like that. And um, so in the sanity test, uh, we we check most of most uh, like uh, functionality, like mm. um, uh, the functionality is working properly or not, like in main mm. main functionality. No sanity that that is smoke testing. That main functionality is working. Uh, properly. Shall we? Can sanity I speak? Means Yes, Lakshmi. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sanity means uh, when any defect is fixed. After right. uh, fixing the defect, uh, right. uh, we have to check check it won't affect the other functionality of the application. No, that will be regression. We just check okay. that whether that defect is fixed or not. Okay. Okay. Then only we will accept that. Uh, mm -hmm. Accept that build. Okay. So okay. smoke and sanity is. Uh, is check when we get a new build new build in the sense uh, yeah. after uh, you know um, uh, after we have given the defects to them then we take the build they, they rectify those uh, defects in their uh, in yeah. their build Before and they give the it defects. to us yeah. yes uh, you. no after after they have done with the defects they will yeah. Uh, give it to us after fixing those defects so before yeah correct before closing the defects and before yeah taking or accepting that build from the developer what we do yeah from tester we, side we test it we sanity yeah. test it we smoke test it that uh, either the build is not breaking anywhere in the important uh, areas either this build either we have uh, given those uh, defects is properly fixed or not no just to check that uh, in an overview that whether they have done all those things or not so that this build is acceptable for testing our regression testing or not so for that we do the smoke testing and sanity testing okay sanity is what as the name says just to see that whether everything is clean or not sanity part what the, whatever defects we have given to them they have done it properly or not not like other functionality we will do once we accept the build and then we see that in the regression part we will uh, uh, like run all the test cases and see that whether the other functionality is affecting or not or all those things will come in the regression testing but okay, so while accepting we do smoke and sanity accepting okay, so the build. 
Yes. So if, if it's a new new business and if they they building like till creating first build, mm -hmm. in that case uh, we do sanity sanity test or no? That time uh, sanity or smoke testers are not even being created. They they will be created only after we get built again and again. Sanity, see, sanity is just for the defects. So we have, if it is a fresh build, that time there is no defects, right? So that time um, uh, the, there are no like smoke testing and sanity testing test cases are, are these, uh, are taken from our regression test cases only, right? So that is a subset that is just like a, a part of, a, part of regression testing. We just do it with uh, just to check that it's a good build or not. So for we do smoke testing. We do smoke testing when we get a fresh build that uh, all the functionality, main functionality is working fine or not. But sanity, we, we do it when we get the second or the third build. Okay. Smoke testing, of course, we can do it. Uh, like uh, major functionality is working fine or not in the QA environment. Because sometimes it happens that in QA environment, it is not working at all. They have not even checked when we are logging, uh, like entering password and, uh, you know, user ID and password that that time only it is giving us the page not found error. So that means smoke testing is failed. So they fix that in the environment issue or some, uh, some other issue is there. So they have to fix that and then give it back to us. Okay. Clear everyone, what is smoke testing and what is sanity? Any doubts or else? So, can so smoke next. testing is like uh, when developer develops some program, we just check it for the very first time and uh, we check the all the main area areas, not the very internal and not very deep. We just yeah. check it thoroughly. And it mm -hmm. is working on very, very like uh, main areas. It's uh, it's popping out or something like that. That is uh, basically called smoke testing. Correct, correct. So and we then we go a uh, little yeah. deeper for the sanity testing on the second build or th third build when we go internal when we, we tap another tap for the for going to the na next page or something. That is called like no. sanity testing, right? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. If we go deeper and all, that is called as uh, uh, like uh, system testing when we are going, when we are doing it. That is system okay. testing. Okay. Sanity mm -hmm. testing is when we have given some defects to them and the, whether they have rectified those defects or not, or they have given it as it is. They have not worked okay. on over like, uh, and they have given like, it as uh, it is. Okay, like yeah. we they develop any program and we did the smoke uh, testing and uh, we find uh, some errors and we give it back to programmer. Mm -hmm. Not like that, not like that. See, okay. smoke mm -hmm. testing, in smoke testing, we just accept the build and then we start our system testing. We just accept that, yeah, this build is good for our testing purpose, okay. like our system testing purpose. Okay. okay, now we have done the system testing and we find some 10 defects in your application. Okay. okay, and then we have assigned them these 10 defects to their developers and then they have taken the build back. Okay, who, who application they have taken back and they have uh, fixed all those 10 defects. Okay, okay. we gave like 10 defects uh, to the developer. Okay. Now, now mm -hmm. it's their job to fix them. Fix that. Correct. Okay. So in uh, mm -hmm. one day or two day, they have fixed mm -hmm. those defects and then give it okay. back to us. Back to us. Right? Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. in the QA environment, okay. Mm -hmm. In the QA environment, they are given back to us. Now, what is our duty? Our duty that whether they have fixed those ten defects or not, and whether this build is working as per main main functionality is working or not, then only we will accept it and then mm -hmm. start the regression testing. Okay. This so these when when we are checking those ten defects are like done properly that or is not. This is that, that is, is sanity. Sanity. okay huh? got it mm -hmm. yeah that is called sanity testing and and smoke testing we will do as usual that main functionality is working or not so that we can accept okay. those things. correct mm -hmm. once we accept that then again we do our uh, system testing then it is called as regression testing 
also okay again when after uh, once these uh, defects are done when these bugs are clear we'll do the system testing again but this time okay. this is called regression testing right? right yes okay yes why it is called regression testing because regression testing is when we when developers have fixed those defects whether mm -hmm. it is affecting our areas our different area, different, different areas, like uh, whether they are um, affecting, uh, if they have done some fixes and other areas of those fixes are affecting. Or yeah, not maybe the they're the side effects or kind of, you can say. Side maybe. Effects. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. So that is called as regression testing. Okay. Okay, fine. So, yeah. To, to see that whether the, whether the fixed has not affected our other areas, so that is called as regression testing. Clear everyone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are different type of functional testing. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah, so, what is the retesting? Okay. Retesting. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone want to tell what is retesting? Regression okay, testing is re retesting. Uh, no. 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 Okay. Fine. Yeah. See, in sanity, what we do, we just see that whether they have, uh, whether they have uh, rectify our defects or not. Okay. That is sanity testing. But once we accept the bill, we properly test that whatever defect, like, like uh, uh, the, the owner of the defect. Who is the owner of the defect? A particular tester. Right? Tester. Okay. Tester, tester. So those defects will be given to those particular owners, right? So they have taken the responsibility of retesting. Retesting that particular defect. Once you accept the bill, then you will be retesting those defects. Okay, so that is called as retesting. If you properly test it, you properly go, go through the steps and then retest it. And then again, what you will do, you either you will reopen the defect if it is not fixed maybe it is possible that it is still it is not fixed and they missed with the sanity testing sanity testing we are not testing the defect in detail okay maybe uh, with one flow it is a uh, uh, clearing maybe there are some other flow that defect will be reopened correct so those all the areas we have to retest that defect and then see that whether that defect is fixed or not. So that is called as retesting. Okay. No, I'm not getting the retesting. I'm not. I got confused. I'm confused in... with sanity testing and retest. retest. Same here. All mm -hmm. testing are related with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, sorry. Tripping All testing was... are related with each other. Yes, they are related with each other. No? All the testing are related with each other. All the test cases are also related with each other. We so just... first we do smoke testing, then sanity testing, then retesting. No, then we like accept that. the bill. Okay. After that, smoke and sanity, we accept the bill. After that, we start our again. Smoke testing and sanity testing is just 10 minutes job. It's not okay. more than that. In Within 10 minutes or 15 minutes, we have to tell them whether we are accepting your build and we are getting ready with the all the test cases so that we start our testing okay so ju just to tell them that we are okay with your build and then we are starting testing so sanity and smoke together will won't take much time it will like 10 minutes or 15 minutes we will tell them we have to tell them whether we are accepting build or not okay and then we start our detailed testing like uh, uh, no, uh, system testing or regression testing or uh, retesting. All those things we will start. Yes. What is the doubt now? Retesting. Okay. Anybody has any answer about the retesting? Anybody got some clarity? Yeah. Uh, Yes. Okay. Okay. In retesting, we just uh, we just check the defects. Like uh, in in the initial, we, after we get the build, um, okay. we just check if it, if it, if there is any defect. And in regression testing, uh, we check uh, 
like when, whenever programmer change changes change, make make changes in the code, uh, that co that changes will affect in the exist as existing fun functionality or not. That's mm. the regression. That is correct. Point. But there are that is the regression testing, right? I get yeah. that the regression testing. But uh, uh, at that retesting, mm -hmm. we um, check the all the system that. Uh, then what is system testing? We did the we just uh, get uh, get the like build you said what, uh, and uh, we uh, do the system checking, system testing, and we got the ten uh, defects or bugs, and then mm, we give it back to programmer. Then what is the difference between system testing and retesting? Hmm. Yes, anybody wants to tell? It, it yes, yes ma'am. Shall, shall we, ma'am? Shall I tell with one example? Yes, Priya. Yes, Priya. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, I took a, a project, and uh, mm -hmm. first, first I do was uh, smoke testing, and mm -hmm. just, and then after smoke testing, just ten minutes of smoke testing, I'll then I will do uh, system testing. After system mm -hmm. testing, I am getting some bugs. Mm -hmm. After 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 getting bugs, I raise the bugs and I'll give to the development team. Development okay. team will come back with some fixes. Mm -hmm. And after getting the fix, uh, it will uh, the I will get allocated into my team mm -hmm. that is the the so and so bugs are fixed. So then I'll do mm -hmm. sanity testing, mm -hmm. then I will do retesting, then I do regression testing, and then, then I'll do, mm -hmm. and then I'll close the bug. This this is the cycle. Okay, then what will we do in sanity testing? Sanity is testing, we will check the what uh, 10 bugs we gave to the programmer, uh, whether they are fixed or not, right? Sanity testing also comes after, uh, after a bug fixes comes. We'll do sanity testing, retesting, regression testing after bug fix test. Initially, while we are testing, we will do uh, no, normal smoke testing, and system testing. After, I get that. I get that. But after, I'm little. Uh -huh. Tell me. See, I, 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 I have, I have, to, uh, I have raised some bugs, and and the develop uh, and it went to the development development team, and it, they they fixed it and sent us back. Okay. And after sending back, we will check uh -huh. the each bug and we will check the each system. The what already we have tested something and we got the bug and we are say, checking the same thing right so it's called retesting okay once uh, it is uh, it's come back from the programmer uh, from the developer uh, so we'll check the whether the bugs is fixed or not fixed it's still yeah. it's a uh, it's a uh, it's uh, affecting the program it still is giving some problem that is called retesting yes Okay, hmm. what is sanity testing then? Both are same thing, but the sanity testing, we will not go to the test case and do the retesting. We just go, uh, oh, we just take the overview that whether mm -hmm. the defect is whatever we have raised, you know, all the defects we don't see. We just, whatever okay. we remember, we just mm -hmm. see that whether they have done that or not or um. Uh, thoroughly we don't see that we just see that uh, okay yeah, yeah, this has been done or not this has been done or not maybe only one mm -hmm. person do the uh, sanity testing they don't know all the all the testers uh, defects right but they mm -hmm. know maybe the uh, maybe the your lead will do the uh, sanity testing the lead know that these these many people have raised 10 different bugs but maybe he has checked only 8 bugs but two bugs are still remaining for him to check, him or her to check. Then what okay. will happen? They just accept the build. That is not his duty, his or her duty to check all the different defects. Okay. Mm -hmm. It will be checked after we accept the build. We'll check again that read in the retesting that whether that defect is solved or not. Okay. okay. Retesting is done basically after system test, uh, system testing. Retesting is done after we accept the build, after the mm -hmm. defect is fixed. System testing okay. will go again and again, okay. again and again. Mm -hmm. Every time we, we get the build, every time we do the regression testing or the system testing. But okay. retesting is done only when the bug is fixed. Okay. okay. Retesting is only 
focused on the defects testing. Okay. Okay. So in read test, the defects testing. testing. So in so read, uh, I have a question. Sorry. Yes, Pandit. In uh, retesting, we won't check like uh, whether this problem is uh, affecting other uh, pro no. uh, other things no. also. No. In we don't check that. We don't check that. Uh, yeah, uh, regression testing is different and retesting is different. We just check that retesting. If someone asks, it will only concentrate on the defect is fixed or not. That is retesting. So the same thing we are going to do in the sanity one also, right? Because after the sanity system test, sanity, as I told you, know sanity people are maybe all the develop all the testers don't do sanity. Maybe one or two people will do sanity and then accept the build. But one or two uh, tester don't have all the test uh, all the defects list, right? They, they just check that uh, whether these defects whatever they have raised is uh, correct or not. Maybe they don't have that flow knowledge okay maybe they have not tested all the defects also maybe there are 15 defects but 10 defects are they are checked but uh, time doesn't permit them to check all the 15 defects so what they will do they cannot reject the defect uh, they cannot reject the build no because they there are 10 defects they have seen the which is already fixed but they have not gone through proper flow Proper flow when will when they will get when the once the uh, once that uh, defect has been assigned back to the testers they will check proper flow that is called as retesting sanity is just the overview retesting is the detailed way that you can remember that way you can remember mm -hmm. clear everyone sanity mm -hmm. is just an overview of the defects whether it is uh, uh, fixed or not and then accept the build then you will do the retesting in a very detailed way that uh, this bug is properly fixed or not according to the requirement uh, Priya was telling something right mm -hmm. uh, so I missed the flow actually uh, after like no, we, will tell you, we will be uh, talking about the flow it will come in the later point of time here. See okay. here we will talk about the flow when we will uh, talk about the defect bug cycle. Okay, uh, that time yeah. uh, the only thing I missed uh, the mm -hmm. after a smoke testing we do system testing, system testing. After that we do sanity. Mm -hmm. uh, after sanity mm -hmm. we do regression or retesting. What do Re we do? Regression. regression. Okay, Both regression. Both, okay. both things we will do. We will do regression also. We will do retesting also. Both the okay. things. We do. So after regression, retesting will be done, right? After regression. See, retesting will be done first. Then we will start the regression. Retesting why oh, we do okay, okay, okay. Because we see that whether the defects has been fixed or not. Then we do the regression, uh, regression testing. testing. Yes. Got it. Got it. So, First smoke and sanity if it is second time build. Okay. If it is first time build, we'll do only smoke because there is no sanity scope is there. Correct? The scope is not there. We will get it, get it for the first time. So scope of sanity is not there because there are no defects when we get it for the first time. Okay. That's why we start doing system testing. Okay. Then we start doing system testing. Then we find defects. Then we give it to them. Then again, we get some build. Uh, some uh, fixed build, then we do smoke and sanity at, at the same time. Okay, clear everyone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hmm. With Tali, is that yes. clear to you? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Then you can put your hands down. Oh, uh, I did my yeah. hands up. Okay. Yeah. So now, um, the next thing is levels. So we have already discussed in the um, uh, in the model that first we have to do the unit testing. Unit testing is basically done by the developers. Sometimes it is done by the testers also. It all depends on your project to project. Okay. Then integration. What is integration testing now? Can someone tell what is integration testing? Uh, once two. Can I say it? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, in unit 
in unit testing uh, that each and every developer check their own modules Got but it. in integration uh, like two or three developers or many developers integrate their modules together and they will check the flow if it is going properly or not correct so integration is means when we integrate two modules and then we start our testing so that is called as integration testing when more than one module is is being tested correct system testing is what when everything is being uh, integrated and we do we uh, check the overall system acceptance testing is what when we do the uat testing user acceptance testing when we are checking it in the acceptance environment uat environment okay that time it is called as acceptance testing clear everyone there are more many more uh, testing in between also but uh, these are the main level if if you if someone asks you about the levels of software testing then these are the level okay yeah this this are the documentation which you have to which is the assignment okay this test plan i have given you this assignment right what is test plan test scenario can someone tell what is test plan and what all um, uh, points come under test plan like objective all those things yeah anybody have uh, done that? yeah uh, the test plan is kind of an instruction instruction man, uh, manual uh, in which uh, we mention like that um, that I mean, uh, the person who creates the test plan, they'll mention like who will perform, uh, like uh, what is the responsibility of uh, which tester or which person is going to do what in the project or in the mm -hmm. test, uh, like they will check the roles and responsibility and mm -hmm. they'll check the uh, scope of the project mm -hmm. and uh, like, uh, and we can also change the test plan, a test plan uh, as per the requirement also. Correct. Correct. So it yeah. has entry criteria, exit yeah, criteria. It has a, yeah, yeah, entry criteria, mm -hmm. exit criteria. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, these all things will be done in the test plan. And you told about some test strategies also. So Correct. I checked that one too. So yeah. in the test strategies, uh, we have... Uh, uh, we uh, that is also a documentation, but uh, mm -hmm. we will check like what kind of testing we are going to perform in this uh, mm -hmm. software. Yeah. So yeah. those yeah. things and that will be fixed. We cannot change that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the test plan, we can change it according to the uh, requirements, but we cannot mm -hmm. change the test strategies. Mm -hmm. Correct. So the approach could be changed. So in test plan, we have a scope, scope of the project, approach of the project, resources, like what are the different resources we need? We need uh, five developers, five testers, or whatever uh, uh, roles and duties we have to distribute to the different people, correct? Architecture or uh, you no know, environment people or data people, whatever, whatever resources we have, we need. Okay, and schedule. What is schedule? Schedule means this thing should be done by this time. So that okay. is schedule. Correct? Yes. Okay. Of intended test activities or development activities. So all those things will be come under test plan. Test plan. Okay. And test scenario also you can you whatever uh, test scenario means what anyone want to say what is test scenario it all depends on the like, area to be tested yeah. identified yeah. the whole idea sorry yes uh, come again yeah, identify the, all the possible area to be tested and what correct. to be tested correct correct like uh, like, uh, like example, login page uh, yes. uh, mm -hmm. registration page like that in a particular yeah. portion of the application yes so in login page there could be mm -hmm. how many scenarios are there you know yes. you can you can add um, you no know, eight letters or eight uh, eight letters of your uh, password you should have uh, you know uh, 
special characters in your password you should have all those things all those yes. things will come under scenarios okay, scenario, okay. If you have written blank uh, login and blank password and hit the submit button what will happen if you okay. have that is the test the case invalid, right what will happen sorry uh, uh, that is a test case right a scenario is that we uh, we are testing the login page yes that is scenario one scenario means... but mm -hmm. uh, if we test under that uh, that will uh, the that will be considered as a test case right uh, yes, like uh, cases are based on test scenarios only right oh, okay. so all the different scenarios scenario means scene just a scene just like yes. scene different scenarios of a like for login you have different scenarios Test cases is mm. when you are writing something, and scenario means like, yeah, you are right that these are the test, test, test cases. Test case okay. name. No. So this is the consider as a single line statement which notify the area of your application, uh, like um, uh, will where it will be going. Like we will just notify the area, not like test cases will be the D will be the deep detail of step by step like what are the condition three conditions post conditions uh, actual expected all comes under test case but in test scenario we'll just give the one liner that it should be a six digit number like password should be a six digit number so that is one scenario after that what you will do there are some detailed test cases steps in the in test case it will be step wise okay Scenario mm -hmm. is a one-liner statement that for this scenario, you will be going to write these test cases, okay? Yeah. For these many test cases, okay? Clear, everyone? Yes. Any other doubts? Yes. No. No, no. Okay. okay. Now, what is test matrix or requirement traceability matrix? R it's R about the requirements mm -hmm. and test cases like a mapping of both requirements and test Correct. cases got it so it all it has all the possible mm -hmm. all the possible requirements which is uh, which which the client has given to you Correct? yeah yeah and you have to map that once you are done with your test cases you have to map that whether you have done with all the requirements or not yes Anybody wants to add any a point in this R RTM? This is also called as RTM, Requirement Traceability Matrix. Yes, anyone want to add in RTM? Hello. Art, art okay. effects. This Something is the is art here? effects. Yes, yes, Tripti. Probably Go your uh, voice is disconnecting actually. Just your voice is breaking. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Chavi, your voice is breaking actually. Okay, okay. Just wait mm -hmm. for one minute. Mm-hmm. Was actually. Yeah, sure. Oh, so, in you. which topic you want more clarification? Like in uh, Just tell me the test plan. I got the test scenario. There is a one liner like uh, there should be a password in six digit. There should be some special characters or something. Right. And uh, what are the test plans? What is the first uh, like? Uh... Test plan in software testing. Okay, so test plan, you have these many types. Uh, types is like, uh, I mean, um, 
types and uh, what all included in test plan that is more important so this is the like test objective what is the objective of your project right? uh, what is the objective of testing your project okay so that comes under test plan what is the approach what approach you you um, you follow when you start testing okay what are the tools you require no there are yep. different types of tools like jira tools uh, mm -hmm. okay for, mm -hmm. for jira tool for your test management G, mm -hmm. other tool for testing purpose either it is manual testing or it is automation testing if it is automation mm -hmm. which tool you are required which language you require uh, all the test environment okay test schedules all mm -hmm. the team responsibilities like what responsibility you give it to which people huh? who is the ba who is the architecture who is the you know senior developer who is the uh, junior developer who is the senior tester who is the testers who is the qas all those things come under this yes, test plan. plan yes so see this is just a document okay there is no uh, again this is not a Mm -hmm. uh, 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 this is not a, a fixed thing. You can again, you can change it according to your uh, requirement. So entry criteria is not written here, but also it also have the entry criteria that right? what are the criteria. criteria for that particular project? What are the exit criteria? Exit criteria means when mm -hmm. your project is done, uh, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, like in which part of the project? Like somewhere it should be done also, right? Like okay. this is the this is mm -hmm. the ultimate uh, thing that we are gonna do it, and then we are done with the uh, with our with our project. So that is called as exit criteria. Like uh, after doing this, we are done because otherwise, what will happen? Client will keep on giving you the requirement, and then keep on mm -hmm. uh, telling you to do all these things. So there should be a Okay, and exit criteria. Yeah, okay. exit criteria. So this at this point we will be ending our project. So these are all the different type of different points which which uh, which will come in the test plan. And who will prepare the test plan? Mostly the test leaders, test manager, those people uh, do the test plan, uh, do the documentation. But you should also know that. Mm -hmm. what, all, what all is involved in test planning okay mm -hmm. so again this is also very important interview question that what is the difference between test plan and test strategy so test plan is a document that derived from the srs srs is what the system requirement specification <laughs> and it, it 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 combines the scope of the testing activities of the testing and all those things. Test strategy is the high level document which describe the way the testing should be carried out or the process. It will give you the process that how the testing will be carried out in the in whole project. Okay, so the process how the testing will be carried out. So that is called as test strategy. Okay. okay? You can also learn more, more and more information like what is the difference between test plan and test strategy. Yeah, correct. So different difference between uh, test plan and test strategy. So like that you can search and then you can read it. Uh, yeah, this is a good uh, 99, Guru 99 is so you can go through it. I'll just share this link with you. Okay. So that uh, you can, uh, you know, uh, read more. Okay. I'm not going to take one by one, but you can read it and uh, clear your all the doubts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can we move on? To the next topic, which is a defect management. Okay, so what is defect management? This defect management is a process uh, which can be defined the, uh, like when we are 
defining a bug or when we are detecting a bug or when we are fixing a bug, it is necessary to say that the bug occurs on the on which point of time. So that you should document it. Okay. Uh, so that that is uh, there, there are few points or few uh, you can say uh, few things you should remember and make a make a documentation of defect like defect detection at which point of time you you find this defect okay and uh, is there any particular formula or uh, or um, of fixing those defect okay so so that you know why we are doing this so that the future people can see these list of defects and uh, how we have fixed that defect so that they can use it for their future purpose okay so that's why we do this type of um, uh, this type of documentation so this is also comes in the documentation part how to manage your defect for the future reference okay in which part of area we got these defects so that next time it should not come okay uh, it's it more it's it more helpful for the developers also it's more helpful for the testers also that maybe in this point of time we can get these defects and for the developers we should not get these defects at this point of time so for both the people it is it is helpful okay Clear. So these these are the like how we have fixed the defect. How what is the bug list creation? All those things will be the documentation part, which for the future reference. Okay. Now comes the most important part, which is the defect bug life cycle. This is this is the most favorite question of the interviewer. They definitely ask one or two question from this. Okay. Now anyone want to explain? What is defect or bug life cycle from from this? Like looking into this, anyone want to take the initiative to? Explain? Yeah, I would like to. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Pallavi. Yeah, uh, in a bug defect, uh, in a defect uh, or bug life cycle, we initially uh, raise a bug, and uh, like we write a story, like at what point we got the bug, mm -hmm. and uh, we assigned it to the uh, uh, to the developer who has developed the, uh, that module. So we assigned it to them. And after that, uh, that developer, um, this uh, bug will be in the active stage at that time. And when the bug got fixed by the developer, it is um, reopened. It is, accepted. it is accepted by the developer, then it will be in active state. Yeah, okay. when it wow. is accepted okay. by the developer, it will be in the active, active. state. And okay. then he will fix the bug and yeah. he will reopen it. So yeah. that one, one point I sorry. want to add here, Pallavi. So yes. These, these two things, like developer can also reject the bug. Uh -huh. when, when, it, when the developer find that this bug is not valid, then they can reject the bug. Okay, yes. with the with given points like clarification that this is the reason I'm rejecting the uh, bug or the defect or what is mm -hmm. the what is the meaning of deferred postpone okay. postpone yes so the uh, that developer can also postpone that this is not in current scenario this is not a defect but we can mm -hmm. defer the bug and we in later point of time in later build or in later sprint we can fix this defect so that is in a deferred state the status of this defect will be that deferred and there is one more thing which is duplicate so developer can also make that defect as duplicate because maybe um, if one tester has uh, raised the defect and again the other tester has also read the uh, that particular defect then it will be a duplicate so that is also possible that it will uh, assign that defect as duplicate. Then again, yeah. Once it is active, there is again one uh, one thing which is like, like fixed. Yes, it has to there be fixed. fixed. Yeah. Then it uh, will test the 
bug yeah. again and mm. if it is not fixed then we'll reopen it and it again yeah. went to the activist days the same process happened yeah. uh, yeah. otherwise if the, the bug is fixed fixed and uh, we have already tested like a tester has already tested it then yeah. it will retesting this this portion is called a retesting, retesting. yes and yes. we'll close the bug after that once uh, we check like right. everything is done we'll close mm -hmm. the bug um this uh, i have this question uh, like if we check if we feel like this bug is uh, not supposed to be rejected and it is a bug and mm -hmm. developer is saying that uh, that is not a bug mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, they have they are rejecting it so mm -hmm. like uh, what will happen after that like uh, right. we'll not have any responsibility after that or uh, that will be a developer's responsibility because he <laughs> has rejected it so we do not have to check it or what do we have to do exactly yes anyone has answer for this particular question because this is a also a very favorite question of interviewer should we, that should we someone... ask to product owner yes yes like let me rephrase this question then we will seek for the answers okay uh, you are uh, you have raised the defect and developer says that it's a rejected defect and you are not convinced with them like you as a tester okay tester is not convinced with that uh, whatever uh, reason the developer has given in their uh, rejection so you are not convinced that whom you will approach yeah answer so first uh... Mm -hmm. and then ask the product owner i guess product owner directly will go to the product owner product owner will come at the end state we so we need to approach lead. manager or uh, our uh, manager first you will approach the leader correct yeah. then this is between the tester and the developer then whom you will approach for the first you'll approach the really? leader right your leader then leader will say uh, something but uh, still you are not convinced with the leader then you'll approach to the manager okay the manager says this thing uh, <coughs> or manager uh, doesn't have much knowledge then you will reach to the ba right ba because business analysts know the requirements and they know that how to de uh, they, they only take the project and give it to us right so ba people are more into the requirements and uh requirement analysis okay now ba also says that this is not a defect and you can reject that uh, uh, defect but still you are not convinced then whom you will go sorry what was the question chavi yeah like see one one step one one step you should go uh, go up right the first step was if you the defect is rejected but as a tester as a senior tester you are not uh, convinced or as a junior tester also you are not convinced that uh, developer has rejected but i am saying that it's a defect and according to the requirement you will say that this is the requirement and this has been fixed but developer is not uh convinced with that fixed and they he is saying that he or she is saying that this is not a defect and this uh, this is the flow okay then whom should you will go scrum master scrum master very good scrum master is has some idea then architecture yeah. okay but uh, everyone was saying uh, by this time it will be like a problem will be more or less will be solved but as someone says product owner right who said i said yeah pail pail has said product owner so once you are so much into it like so much uh, not convinced from the even from the scrum master also what you will do you will go to the with the help of your seniors you will go to the product owner and ask them that this is what my doubt is and can you please tell the correct requirement and whether this flow is correct or not but what 
what is correct by either the developer who is saying is correct or the whatever I am saying is correct. So accordingly, you will solve your problem. Okay. Clear? Sure. Any doubt? Yes. Uh, no, I, I have another question actually. Yes. yes this deferred, uh, this deferred uh, defect oh uh, hmm. where will it show like it will show to the developer or it will be on the active stage on the developer side or on the tester side i mean when uh this default go into the active stage or on the test stage see see these are all the status of the defect, right? defect these are all yes. the different status mm -hmm. right so the the status of defect uh this defect will be deferred, deferred. Yes. Deferred will Till be, how long okay. it will be a deferred defect? Uh, when Project will it come will... into the active? And yeah. who will turn into the active? The developer or the tester? Uh, of course, the tester only. Tester only, it will uh, come to the tester because the, the assignment will be on the tester. Deferred will be assigned to the tester. Okay. So the developer cannot see the deferred effects then? No, we'll they, see. Can see, they can see all the defect, uh, defects in the project. In closed defects also they can see, they can see. Uh, but they can see the only defect. their, pro, uh, their uh, defects no, no, only, no. right? No, no, we can see everyone's defect, whatever defects are under that project. You can assign, uh, you can write the name, you can filter for, by the name also, you can yes. filter by the, uh, by the status also, yes. you can filter by uh any anything like uh, oh, oh yes uh, but uh, yeah on the dashboard they can see their yeah. own but they, if they want to check the other defect they can check it by yeah. the filtering yeah. by name they yeah uh, so uh, the default defect uh, will be uh, will be on the tester side and when they will turn this default defect into the active defect when yeah. what time will they turn it so it uh, this depends yes. uh, because deferred why we have put deferred is because uh, to you know to do that in the next release it depends yes. on the product owner actually if they agree uh, like you know we can do it in the next release and it will be in deferred uh, status and uh, and the product owner itself uh, the customer itself will tell you know we need this uh, this time you know this feature need to be done so at that time this deferred uh, feature you know uh, it, it will be activated at that time oh, okay okay yeah not even like project owner uh, like uh, product owner is not required only the project owner or the lead or the even the developers can also find out that this is the point they can we can uh, fix this defect because current scenario we are not reach into that part so it all depends that how is the defect how how they have differed by either they have understood the point that when it is need to be fixed if it is understood then don't need to go to the higher management just resolve it in uh, in in your uh, in your way only that okay in this build we can we can fix this defect or when this requirement will come we can fix this defect so that is that is fine Okay. No, my, just, um, my concern mm -hmm. was like uh, this deferred defect not left behind, right? No, it no, will no. be fixed at some time, but who will yeah. turn into the active stage? That was yeah. my main concern. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what and who will it. tell the tester like, okay, this is the new release and now this deferred defect uh, come into the active stage or that now you have to check the, it. That is written in the in the in the comment of the uh, defect only right at this point of time we will fix this defect so that uh, so that time you have to remember our deferred uh, list of deferred defect we, you have to keep on checking keep on checking oh, that there could okay. not be like more than you know five or ten defect deferred defects so you have to keep on checking that this is the defect the owner's responsibility who is the owner tester Tester. So, tester's okay. responsibility to make this defect again. Okay, new Active. assignment. Oh, to check. Yeah. yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome. Anyone has any other question? Can you go through this page one more time, please? This page? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, From the uh, first thing, uh, 
Uh, okay. So the new defect has been, you have found while testing, while doing the testing, you have find the new defect and you have created a new defect. Uh, tester has created a new defect and it is assigned to the developer who has, whoever developer uh, is given to you, then the developer will assign to the particular developer that is their, uh, their thing. Then developer can accept that defect. Okay, and make it active. At time he can act uh, uh, when he it uh, it is assigned to the developer. At it at that moment it is it is showing as active, right? Whether it's rejected or uh, that's a that's a letter. When letter. Is, it is uh, assigned to the developer, it is yeah. an active mode. It is an yes. active. It's an active mode. Correct. You are okay. correct. <clears throat> so that time it is an active mode. So it's mm -hmm. developer responsibility to make it. Uh, make it fixed. There is also one more fixed, as I have told you that there is one more thing fixed. Uh, either you fix uh, developer responsibility is to make it fixed or rejected or deferred. Okay, and okay. there is also in progress also, like uh, okay. when the developer is working on this defect, so they mm -hmm. can make it as a in progress. So okay. in progress mm -hmm. also. Okay. okay. So once it is in progress and then fixed, then it will come to the tester for testing. Okay. Come again to the test for the testing. Again means, yeah, it's the first time, no? It is testing, like come to the testing. Okay. So okay. if mm -hmm. you have reopened the defect, then it is like a, again, it is coming. But first time, like once it is fixed, it will come to the tester part. Tester will mm -hmm. either uh, test it and reopen it or it will be verified and it will be yeah okay and uh, if this is uh, the rejected and deferred and uh, this is uh, while the active mode Re rejected again it is assigned to the developer only if it is uh, deferred then again it is assigned to the developer uh, sorry tester only if it tester is rejected only. then it is assigned mm -hmm. to the tester deferred then also it is assigned to the tester tester okay correct okay correct yes. okay. and uh, while testing also it is assigned to the tester tester okay. mm -hmm. clear everyone uh -huh. shall yes. we uh, in between yeah. there is one more status right uh, after uh, assign uh, it will go to the developer it will be an open status and then it will be open. fixed uh, they will put as fixed then fixed. the it will go to the tester and uh, the tester will do the retest uh, in yes. between so the retest is also yeah. there in tester also there is like in progress Again, like uh, verified, fixed. Again, it will be closed. So there are few things which are left, like open is also one of the status. And open uh, or in progress. That's in uh, progress. That, yeah. uh, between the programmer also. There is uh, the same status between the testing also, right? Correct. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. So clear, everyone. If you get... Uh, so if you asked for the defect uh, life cycle, so you are clear with the all the stages, okay? All the stages of defect life cycle, okay? Okay, so these are all the important interview questions which you can go through it by your own and then uh, you can ask me if you have any doubt, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so can we start <coughs> Java today? Little bit of Java, if you are all okay. Just uh, ten minutes of Java, yes, so sure. that you know. Okay, yeah. Ten, ten, twenty minutes of Java, so that you know you should have an um, idea of what we are gonna start our in our next class. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is core Java? So to, so this is the core Java part. So what is Java basically is a programming language <clears throat> which was originally developed by the Sun Microsystem, which has uh, uh, which was uh, initiated by the name James. Okay, James Gosling, and it is released in 1996 as a core component of Sun Microsystem. Okay, now it is uh, taken by some other company. So the latest release is also not SE 16, it is now 18 also. And uh, sometimes they ask that what is the first name of Java? So that is Oak. Oak is the first name of Java. Before Java, it was uh, called as Oak. 
okay so this is just an overview history of uh, java also i want you to go through all these things uh, like um, you know, what is the object oriented programming okay java is a programming language as i have already told you and uh, java is a or object oriented programming language oops concept okay so what is oops concept uh, then everything is about the object okay so what is object object is whatever we see from our open eyes is an object so java can be easily extended since it is an object model okay uh, java is uh, platform independent that means in each and every platform they can you can use it why we will uh, learn this in detail about the jvm and all those things but you go through it why it is platform independent it's very simple to learn language why because it has a simple oops concept and it is like a uh, very easy and related to the real world example i will explain you everything in a real world example so that it will be easy for you to understand okay it's a very secure language okay why because uh, like virus is not going to hit easily on these uh, on the java language okay architecture neutral so java has a very easy architecture will we will learn about the java architecture in detail in our next uh, next class okay it's a very portable language robust language it's a multi threaded language okay high performance is it's very high performance in the uh, different area and distributed dynamic it's a, java is very dynamic language also okay <clears throat> just a second okay so this is the architecture of our java okay so uh, what is jdk jre jvm that we will learn in detail in this particular diagram okay so jdk is java development kit in jdk we have this is the full java development kit in this we have a jre which is a java runtime environment so whatever what environment they created for running our programs okay so this is the environment which is created to run our programs now they have a development tools all those development tools like uh, you know, what are development tools we require like classes packages uh, you know compilers documents all those tools development tools are there okay packages are different but uh, what is uh, 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 java compilers for running our uh, you know uh, uh, programs all the documents which are available in java development tools now what is jre jre is a what is jre jre is java runtime environment in which you have all the packages and classes and libraries and java virtual machine what is java virtual machine in which virtual is what in which you can that you cannot see but you know that there are some memory areas there are some execution engine there are some loaders which uh, helps us to execute our program okay so java virtual machine virtually anyways everything is virtual here we cannot see this uh, through our eyes but we know that somewhere it is storing somewhere some memory areas is there where our uh, program is storing from where we can access those things okay not even program our variable whatever variable we define they are storing somewhere right so those are all virtual areas okay 
and Java packages and classes. So there are some runtime libraries which we are going to download. And you can see those libraries in our list of the programs, okay, that we will show in the next class. What you have to do is you have to install your Java, okay. Here I will tell you how to install the Java. Okay. Command prompt, you have to start the command prompt. Everyone know that how to start the command prompt by CMD? Yes or no? No. No. So you just have no. to run here the here CMD command prompt CMD and it will be open. So you can just click here. So this will be open. Okay. This. Okay. Anyone has Java in their machine? No. No. Okay. So I'll send you one uh, one video by which you can uh, install Java in your machine and you check that whether you have uh, Java in your machine, how I will show you. Ravi, can you please send for both the uh, Windows and Mac also? Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank okay. You. So what you will do, you will just have to find Java hyphen version. Okay, so here you see I have Java version as 11. Okay, 11 version I have in my system. Okay, anyone was saying something? Uh, yes, I have IntelliJ. Uh, so will it work for me? No, no, IntelliJ is not going to work. So you have to check in your system that uh, by this command. Okay, I will send this command on the chat also. It's java space hyphen version okay in the cmd prompt cmd you have to check okay in cmd prompt you have to check that whether you have java version available or not okay otherwise if it is not there what you have to do is i will send one video also and I'll, I'll just show you uh, how to install java okay you just have to go there and write Java downloads. Okay, download. See, uh, for a window 10 or window 11, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want, you can use it. Just go to the Oracle, yeah, this one, oracle.com, okay, Java downloads where you can download the Java. Okay, so or else you can also search for Java JDK JDK downloads. Okay, if then it will be the first option. It will be same. Then what you have to do, you just have to go down and there are options of Linux, Mac. Also, you have Mac options. Also, you have Windows options. So whoever has Windows will, in, will see that which product you have. I have 64 installer. So that you have to check. Okay, I already have installed, so I will not do it. Whoever has done, you have to install it by JDK installer, whatever version you have. I will send you a video also, which will be helpful for you to install Java. Okay. Then there are different versions available, but you download 11 only, that will be good. There are Java 19 also available now. <clears throat> yeah, 19. Yeah. How but, we will check this is Java 64 or yeah, some 32? No, this is your uh, this is your window machine. Okay, your window is 64 bit or uh, or uh, whichever is is your window machine that you have to check. Mostly it is like 64 only. I'll check in the. I will send you that video that that will help you. Okay, you just go to the YouTube. 
and search for uh, Java installation in Mac or in Windows, with whichever you wanted to install in Java Windows or Java 10 or Mac. I will send some videos for you that will be helpful for you to install. Okay. Or Java 11. I, I basically recommend to install Java 11. Why? Because it will be helpful in your uh, Jenkins when you go, uh, go further. No, it will be helpful. So I'll search and I will send it to you about the Java 11 version only. Ja uh, either 8 or 11. You have to install. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to when you are be uh, doing it in the Jenkins and all programming that time. That time it will be difficult for you. Okay, I'll send you those uh, those links. You just have to follow all the steps and then do it. Okay. So what we will do, we will stop here. Our... You will send in mail or in a WhatsApp group or seat. I'll, I'll send in WhatsApp. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. I'll send in the WhatsApp and then uh, uh, you can go through.